Okay, we've covered one-way tables using one variable. We've covered two-way tables using two variables. Now we're going to do three-way tables. I mean, obviously, there's sort of a natural end to this, right? You, you don't want four or five-way tables because the table gets so complex that it's not really useful for your audience or your reader, right? You might as well just provide a whole data set then. Um, so I think three-way tables is probably the, the last step in this succession. And um, even then, you have to be really careful in whether it makes sense uh, to use a, a three-way table or not. Um, the principle of producing a three-way table in R, at least the way that I'm showing you, is, is basically to create a data set that contains everything that you want to show in your three-way table and then formatting that data set and exporting it. It's a similar principle to one of the approaches I introduced for one-way and two-way tables, which is basically first you get your statistics through using a function, then you convert that statistic into a data frame, and then you export that data frame into a uh, table object. So. Uh, it's not super convenient in R, but but this is this is how it is. And um, I also want to say that there are many ways to produce tables in R. There are several more uh, packages that help you produce uh, formatted tables. I'll just present it to you two or three approaches to do it, but there are many other ways. So explore on the internet and explore the additional resources down below in, in the course uh, to find out other approaches. All right, let's dive in and go to R. Um, again, code is prepared here to produce a three-way table. We're still in our previous sessions on, uh, on tables. And I'm going to go through this step by step because it's a little longer uh, chunk of code here. And you notice we're doing a lot of steps iteratively one after the other using the pipe operator. So first, we're going to load the student's data set. Right, and we got put. We're going to put the student's data frame into a new object called tab three. And um, within the student's data frame, we're only going to keep three variables using the select function: cob, uh, country of birth, sex, and relationship. Then, well, actually, let's just run that. Uh, let's see what it looks like. See, we only get these three variables left. Still got our thousand students. Then we're going to group by those three variables, right? So, so for every unique combination of all of these three categories, right? For example, males in Spain that are in a relationship, right? Um, we are going to count the number of observations. So basically how many males in Spain that are in a relationship are there um, versus uh, males in Spain that are not in a relationship, right? Um, so we're going to group by these variables and then use the summarize function and use the shortcut function n in brackets that gives us the number of rows within each group, right? So let's do that. And we see we got a lot fewer variables. And now we have sort of the unique combinations, for example, females in Austria that are in a relationship and females in Austria that are single males in Austria that are in a relationship and males in Austria that are single. So these are all the combinations of country of birth, sex, and relationship. And for each group, we now have a variable indicating how many students fit that category in our data set, right? So next up, we're going to group the data again, and this time by sex and country of birth, right? So basically, we always lump two rows together here, which form a new category, um, right, which sort of, which group the relationship. Um, we're going to do that because then we're going to calculate the percent um, of, for example, females that are single versus in a relationship within females in Austria. All right, I'm going to show you how that looks like. Going to use the mutate function first group then use the mutate function and this here just produces the percent right we're going to use our variable how many are there um, right how many students are there and then we use the summarize function which sums up the uh, number of students within the group right so in this case it's summing up 13 and 34 which are females in austria right it's adding them and 
taking one of them divided by the sum of them, right? And then times 100, which is basically converting the, the number of students into the percentage, right? Let's do that, see what it looks like. Okay, right? And they all up, add up to 100% now because 100% of females in Austria, 72% um, are single in our data set. Now we're going to filter out some missing values in the country of birth uh, using the filter function and then the function is na. And if you add an exclamation mark before the function, it just reverses this and says is not uh, missing, right? So we are keeping only the observations of the country of birth that are not missing here. Now the pipe operator, and then we're actually going to, well, let's run that first. Okay, and then we're going to use a command we, we, we learned in the previous session, which is the pivot wider, right? Now our, um, our data set here, our data frame, you could consider it to be in long format, right? Because you have, for example, the, the information on the sex um, beneath, each other, uh, beneath each other, so female, male, female, and so forth. So what if you want to spread it out um, to make our table look a little, uh, little nicer? So we use the pivot wider, wider function. We're gonna take um, information from the sex variable and spread it out wide. And we're gonna take the values from both the number of observations, the number of students, and the percent variable that we created, those two here, right? Number of students and number of students in percent. So if we do that, our table looks like this now. So basically, we have now information on the country of birth, the relationship, and sex, right? And, and so there are three variables. This is our three-way table. Um, and we have it both in absolute numbers of females and, and males, and as well as the percentage. This is basically it. We could stop here and just export it. We're now going to, as we did before, use the flex table function and export that as a, or produce that as a table. And this is what it looks like. Um, this is what the three-way table, uh, three table looks like. It's not super pretty. You could now go ahead and actually format it, you know, changing the column labels here, uh, reducing the number of digits and so forth to make it a little look nicer to then use in a report or a, a, a paper or something like that. All right, next up, summary tables.